You're watching Brockton Community Access, uh, coverage of the November 7th, 2017 election. Um, we are doing different debates for city council, council at large, mayor, and school committee. Tonight, we expected to do a debate in Ward 7 between the incumbent Tim Sullivan and the challenger Ray Henningsen, and we only have one candidate that showed up tonight, so we're going to be fair to him and give him his time on television. Uh, Ray Henningsen is here in studio. I'm here with Shana Barnes, who is who's, who's going to be asking different questions of Ray, and uh, we it's, it's not going to be a debate. It's going to be kind of Q&A with Ray, I guess. Ray, uh, we're going to uh, give you the opportunity to do the opening statement and the closing statement like we talked about and uh, you can take it away it's a one minute uh, opening statement well thank you Mark and Chena. Um thanks for having me tonight I, I, I wish my opponent was here um, so we could have a, a lively spirited debate but uh, needless to say uh, my name is Ray Henningsen and I'm running for Ward 7 school committee a little bit about myself I'm married for 26 years to my wife Tracy I have two children Sean who's 11 going to the George school and Megan, who's 19, who graduated Brockton High and now attends UMass Amherst in pre-medical studies. Being a lifelong resident of Brockton, I attended Ashfield East Junior High at Cardinal Spellman. I'm the vice president of finance for a construction company in Boston with over two decades of financial and budgetary experience as an accountant. I'm the former board of director and treasurer for Brockton Day Nursery. I'm the current treasurer of Keith Park Neighborhood Association. I serve on the Brockton Conservation Commission as a commissioner I'm a member of the NAACP and serve on the executive board. When I'm not serving on these boards and commissions, I donate my time and energy to our community by having various supply drives, such as a school supply drive that I've done over the past five years, raising thousands of dollars and thousands of school supplies for our children. I've been endorsed by the Latin Women's Association of Brockton because they believe I'm the best candidate with the experience needed during these tough financial times. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. So we will start with uh, some questions, and uh, Shana is going to start the questions, and then I'll follow through. Great. Uh, thank you, Mark, and thank you, Ray, for coming. Um, I'm just going to hit at the, the, the question that probably everybody asks, because it's a pretty tough question. So uh, you were first elected in 2013. Uh, we were on the trail together, first-time candidates for both of us at the time. Uh, you were unopposed, and you won for Ward 7 uh, School Committee member. You served for those two years, and then in 2015, you were defeated by the now incumbent, Tim Sullivan. Why are you running again? What, what, happened, what has been happening, I guess, in those two years that um, has, I guess, invigorated you to uh, rejuvenate your campaign? Well, uh, surprisingly, I was never, when I lost, it was obviously you know, devastating to a lot of people, including myself. You know, it wasn't something I had expected, uh, certainly not to, to lose by... 31 votes, which, you know, goes to prove that every vote does truly count in the city, especially in local elections. So I encourage people to go out there and vote. Um, I, I think what kept me going was the fact that I truly believe that education is the great equalizer for, for our children, and we need to give every child the, the education that, that they deserve. You know, they're 20% of our population, but 100% of our future. And w without quality public education, you know, what, what are we what are we saying to our kids? What are we saying to our you know families? I believe strongly that education really is the fix for so many problems. Crime, you know, it, it's it's education. When you open those doors to children, you give them those opportunities that that you know are, are there's your doctors, your lawyers, your scientists, your your inventors. Um, you know, the cure for cancer could be in one of our child's minds, and what a shame if we didn't cultivate that mind. Okay, so my question, which would have been for both candidates, I'm going to ask it anyway, is why are you a better candidate than the other candidate? You served in the role, he served in the role. Expand on your opening statement. Sure. So, you know, we, we all know that the past few years we've had an incredible budget crisis. Um, however, it, it was derived, whether it was the state funding formula or whether it was, you know, management at the top needed to, to really take a look at some of our internal costs and find ways to do that uh, and make that better. I feel I'm the better candidate because what I bring to the table is two and a half decades of financial experience. Like I said, now I'm a vice president of, of finance. I was a controller. Before that, I was an accountant. I've worked my way up the ladder over the past 23 years in the field. And I believe that you need strong financial knowledge and experience 
especially at this point, to look for creative ways to bring that budget and shrink that down. Am I going to find $16 million? Certainly not. But what I can do is look for creative ways to, to see if we can find uh, savings um, anywhere from you know, maximizing our, our roofs and putting solar panels on our roofs to reduce energy costs to cost sharing of various um, systems and doing whatever we can to save dollars. Um, one, one of the things I said the other day to, to my colleague at work, um, we, we were able to negotiate better terms for one of our vendors. And they said, this is great. And I said, yeah, and it's, and it's a small step, but small steps add up to big steps. So you might save a thousand here, a thousand there, but then eventually you get to a, a, a place where, you know, um, you're, you're better off. And as far as advocacy, you won't find a stronger advocate for our children than I am. Okay, thank you. Shane, next question. Okay. Um, so having served in the role, what would you say was your uh, greatest accomplishment at that time, and what do you plan on focusing on going forward if you are elected, re-elected, re uh, I guess, to, to serve? My greatest accomplishment, well, it's a, it's a few of them. Some of the great things about being on the school committee is when you get to hand out the diplomas to our children. That's a, it's an incredible feeling uh, to hand out awards and diplomas and give them those accolades that they truly deserve. As far as accomplishments, one of the things that I was able to do is there was a controversy years back about the cost of crossing guards, and they were some of the highest paid crossing guards in the country, making over $50 an hour. I was able to work with the crossing guards, the Teamsters Union, and, and other members of the school committee to figure out a way to save on the crossing guard costs, and we did so in a way that saved over $400,000 uh, in cost to the city. So I'd say that was one of my greatest accomplishments there. And as far as future goes, you know, I, I want to uh, work with private industry in the city, private industry outside the city to come up with creative ways that we might be able to increase our STEM, uh, our science and technology. I would love to be able to, to add to that creating partnerships with those private corporations and allow them to use our kids as as, as mentor, mentor the children and give them the opportunity to, to enter that field uh, of science and technology. Okay, um, my next question is every year for the past, I don't know, it, it could be two, three, four, five, there's been layoff notices. The union contract allows, uh, you know, requires that by May 15th, the teachers are given pink slips and the personnel are given pink slips. In the past, all the people have been recalled. There's been not, not too many issues with layoffs. This year is very different. Is there anything you would have done differently sit, as a sitting member of the school committee than your opponent? Um, I would certainly go back to the negotiation table and see if we can make a small tweak to that date. That date is important to some degree because what we're trying to do is give those teachers a little bit of a leg up, especially if they want to go look for other jobs within you know, their field in other districts. It's, it's unfortunate for us, but we do have to make sure that we cover and protect our teachers and, and, and give them that opportunity. They didn't enter into this profession lightly. They've, you know, brought on huge student loans. Most of them have double master's degrees. It's unfair to uh, let them hang in the wind. Um, so it gives them the opportunity to you know, do that. I might look to extend that maybe a few additional days, maybe bring that out to May 20th. Our biggest problem is, is that we're so reliant on the budget um, by the state house mm. that we don't have a full approved state budget uh, from the state house until May, June. So that puts us in a position always. Um, so even increasing it a few days isn't going to make too much of a difference. Um, I think it might help with a couple teachers here and there, but not, not a tremendous difference. But would like to see some changes. But we need strong advocates on the, on, on the local level to advocate on the state house to you know, create budgets that are, that are fair and equitable so we don't have this problem in the first place. Okay, Shana? Um, okay, I, you mentioned about the uh, STEM program, I think. Yes. Uh, STEM. Um, I was gonna ask, wh what is your philosophy on incorporating some more STEAM programs, adding the arts uh, also into some of the curriculum? Well, the arts are, are an incredible program. I, 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 you know, kids all learn differently. Kids, you know, one of the problems we have in education today is there hasn't been much of a change in the way that we educate our children from 50 years ago to today. 
We sit kids in a classroom. We prepare them for the workforce, but we don't necessarily cultivate their mind. And that's not the teacher's fault. The teachers are so burdened by standardized testing and, and various state mandates that they don't have that opportunity. I'm a big believer in giving those kids that opportunity to explore different ways of learning, including you know, the arts and, and different programs. My son you know, loves the saxophone. They cut out um, music programs recently to fourth grade. Luckily, he's in fifth, so he missed that cutoff. But it would have been devastating to somebody like him who you know, loves playing the saxophone. He's actually taking classes right now, mm -hmm. so I'm happy I'm not there because it's, it's quite loud. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, the, the arts are, are an important component of our, of our educational process. School committee has to work as a team. Seven ward members, uh, mayor is chairman of the school committee, and you have the superintendent and the administration. Um, do you believe that you should 100% fully support everything that comes out of the administration, or also when the committee takes a vote that you would 100% support the majority rule? Well, one thing I am not is I am not a rubber stamp. If I feel I have a problem with something, I feel I have a question about something, I'm definitely going to ask that. Um, in, in the past, when I was on the school committee, I had a real big problem with a, a program called Teaching Strategies Gold, which was too invasive to our children, too invasive for our kids. There were uh, 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 teachers, they were asking teachers to record children's toileting habits, which I thought were incredibly inappropriate. What are we going to do with this data? How are we going to deal with the data? Where is it going to go? Who's going to have access to it? Are we selling this data off to somebody? It, it's concerning. Um, I'm not, um, I'm, I, I have big issues with the administration and their, and their um, current uh, methodology for attracting diversity in, in this population as well as the administration population and teachers. Um, so I'm certainly not a rubber stamp and I will work with all the members in a cohesive and collaborative way to try to do what we can to make the system better. Well, thank you, Ray. Believe it or not, 15 minutes goes quick, so we are at the closing statement, so we are going to let you do up to two minutes. All right. So first, thanks to BCA and the moderators, Mark and Shana, for having this sort of debate. <laughs> um, it's critical that the voters see the differences in candidates. I'm the only candidate with two decades of finance and budget experience. In this crucial budgetary crisis, it's very important we elect somebody with the credentials to help our schools in this crisis. Are the schools better off than they were two years ago? I say they're not. Our class size is smaller. They're not. Are teachers dealing with less? Yes, they are. So I believe I'm the best candidate for this job to help right this ship. So a little bit something to ponder um, when, when, you, when you're looking at myself. I was watching TV the other day on a science channel, and we were talking about supermassive black holes. And one thing struck me about that, and, you know, it's not compelling TV to most people, but I thought about vaccinations, electricity, DNA, penicillin, discovered by scientists and inventors and doctors. Amazing things discovered in the past. It's amazing, isn't it? Just think of the things will be discovered tomorrow, but here's something to think about. What if the cure for cancer is trapped in the mind of someone who can't afford an education? See, education is supposed to be the great equalizer. It should not matter where a child lives, their zip code. Every child deserves a chance. I'm deeply concerned about education and where it is headed. That's why I'm running. I believe we must invest in education. We must give our kids the tools to succeed. We must allow our teachers to teach and give them the autonomy to use the gift that they have. We must not judge our teachers on the test scores and evaluate them on how many can pass an arbitrary test. Some say Brockton kids count. I say every kid counts. I have a saying, our children, our future, one Brockton. I believe in that saying. We cannot continue to elect those that are going to shine a seat. We must elect those that act. We need strong leaders who are going to continue to advocate for our children and support staff, and I am that leader. And with your help on November 7th, I'm going to bring leadership back to the school system. Thank you very much. And thank you, Rafe. Thank you for uh, putting your name on the ballot and uh, showing up for the debate. We appreciate it. Thank You're you. watching Brockton Community Access. Thank you, Shana, for being here. And we will have more coverage of election 2017 for November 7th. But the most important thing is to make sure you go out and vote and do your civic duty. Thank you for joining us.